<sighs> I wish... I wish sometimes that you could just go back into time and meet somebody like... What was Aristotle like when he wrote his poetics? That oh, would be great if... Oh, gee, if... If, like, the doctor could just take me back there. What's that noise? Oh, my God. It's... Did it? Why, this is this is ancient Greece, and I must be in Athens. The doctor did. Thank you, doctor. What? Scrolls a million, and there's going to be a scroll signing. Aristotle is here. Oh my God, there he is. Hi, um, Mr. Aristotle? Yes? Oh, I don't mind at all signing a scroll for you. Uh, yes, I, I, I would love to have a, a scroll signed. I, I have so many questions for you. Could you tell me about your, your new scroll? I, I would really appreciate it if if you could just tell me a little bit about the poetics. Oh, I, I'll be happy uh, to uh, give you my newest scroll. Here you go, sir. Now, I'll tell you a little, but not a lot. I, I mean, I, I got to sell some scrolls here, but um, the highlight. Well, as a lot of people know, I'm very fond of Sophocles. I believe his Oedipus the King is probably the greatest play ever written and that will ever be written. It has all the great qualities of a tragedy. So um, I'll be talking about Oedipus the King or Oedipus Rex as uh, some of the hip Greeks are calling it. Uh, Tragedy is an imitation of action. That is an imitation of life. Uh, it should be true to life, but it's more beautiful. Now, tragedy should not be a narrative. It's not a, a poem. It's not something written to be read, it is written to be performed. And therefore, it should show action as opposed to just talking about it. That's very important, to show action. Also, tragedy, all good tragedy, asks three questions. First, why is the world unjust? I mean, as we know, in tragedy, these characters go through horrible things. It's as though the gods were playing tricks on them. And yet, they continue. So the audience, as they watch this, wants to know, why is the world so unjust? We also ask the question, why are men and women 
required to suffer. And finally, what are the limits of human suffering? That's why it's tragedy. I mean, things happen to someone, they are bad, and yet they persevere. In a tragedy, the plot, the story, the plot must be whole. In other words, when you write a tragedy or you go to see a tragedy at one of our festivals, the play has a beginning, a middle, and an end. And everything builds towards that ending, towards that climax. Now, there are several characteristics of tragedy. First, and I think one of the most important, is in a tragedy, the protagonist, the main character, is of noble birth. Now, we don't write tragedies, we don't see tragedies about Harold the, the goat herder. No, we, we see tragedies about kings and queens, great heroes, and sometimes our gods. They must be of noble birth. The second characteristic, the situation is irretrievable. In other words, there is no way out. There's no turning back. The character is caught in this situation, and now they react to it. Next, this noble character, this protagonist, accepts his or her responsibilities for their actions. Let's uh, go back uh, and we'll talk a little bit about uh, the great play Oedipus the King. In Oedipus, the character is born and there has been a prophecy, right? I mean, everyone knows this, it's, it's a hit. There has been a prophecy that this young baby will one day kill his father and marry his mother. So the king and queen, when they hear this, decide the baby must die, and they give the baby to a servant who is to carry it up into the hills and kill it, and thus make sure the prophecy doesn't come true. And the problem is, is it's a baby. The servant doesn't want to kill the child, so he takes it to a neighboring city-state, and there the child is given to a couple to raise as their own. You see, Oedipus has no control over this. It is not his fault. This has been placed upon him. But now he will deal with it in a noble way. In a tragedy, the language is also elevated. In other words, People do not speak like you and me. They speak in verse. Because as we all know, verse is the language of the gods. So therefore, all tragedies are written in verse. You see, a tragedy is much like life. It's, it's true to life but it is more beautiful. It is better than life. Therefore, it, it needs the language of the gods. Verse. Finally, the protagonist in a tragedy is a great and good person 
but they have a tragic flaw. Now let me explain. Let's go back to Oedipus the king. Oedipus grows up in this other country. He um, becomes a, a strong young man and he decides to go, as many young men do, to seek his fortune. He travels to another land and while walking down a road, a man on a chariot tries to run him down. Oedipus has a terrible temper. He doesn't listen to others. When he gets angry, he can't help himself. He can't stop it. This is his tragic flaw. Oedipus kills the man in the chariot then continues on to the city to discover the city is being uh, plagued by a monster. And Oedipus volunteers to save the city. He goes out, acts as a hero, wins the day, returns to the city and the people tell him, oh, our king has disappeared. We have no king. And therefore, since you are such a great hero and you have saved the city, we are now going to make you king. And you can marry the former king's wife, which he does. He marries her. They have children together. And then a plague comes down upon the city, a terrible plague. The city is in turmoil. They don't know what to do. And Oedipus, the king, calls for help. He asks people, what is causing the plague? And there is one seer who tells Oedipus he does not want to know the truth. This angers Oedipus. Again, his tragic flaw. He is advised not to seek the truth, and he does so anyway. And he does it uh, with great intention. I mean, he really wants to find out what's going on, and he's not going to let the seer stop him. He gets angrier and angrier, and he begins to interview different people, and finally, he learns the truth. And what he discovers is the man he killed was his father. The woman he married was his mother. And now he is cursed by the gods and the city is cursed by the gods. And Oedipus is filled with sorrow. His wife and mother also is horrified by what she has heard. We discover that she hangs herself and Oedipus, so full of grief, so full of pain, takes her knitting needles and pokes out her eyes. It's the tragic flaw. It leads this great and good person. They are the, the cream of, of the world. And they are destroyed. So a great and good person falls because of that tragic flaw. Now, in our tragedies, all action, all violence takes place off stage. We do not want to see Oedipus poke out his eyes. We don't want to see the queen hang herself. So in our plays, 
we usually have a messenger who enters and gives this information. You see, we Greeks believe that the mind can conjure up more horrors. Oh my God. Cut. Now, let, let us talk about the three unities. You see, in a good or great tragedy, there must be three unities, time, place, and action. Time. The play all takes place in one 24-hour period. Uh, again, in Oedipus the King, it begins in the morning, and by the end of the day, the story has finished. Place. There's only one setting that takes place in one locale. In Oedipus the King, it all takes place at the palace. We don't have other scenes. It doesn't move. Uh, we Again, because we do the action off stage, and it is described, we don't have multiple uh, sets or scenery. It, it all takes place. One location. And finally, action. There only needs to be one plot. We don't need a lot of different stories taking us off in many different directions. We deal with the story of Oedipus, and that's it. Oedipus's search for truth. Time, place, action. They all must be unified. Now, Getting back uh, to the first questions, you know, why do we suffer? Why must humans endure all this pain? Well, there's a reason for that. And that is that tragedy, the result of watching all this suffering, leads to catharsis. Now, catharsis means the purging of the emotions of pity and fear. Catharsis. The purging of the emotion of pity and fear. You see, many of the, our people here in Greece are, are poor. They live out in the country, they tend their flocks, or they work in little stalls, or maybe they're the person who walks around Athens and shovels up the poo. Well, they're not happy with their lives as they are. Sometimes they feel depressed, they feel sad that some people have more money than them, who live better than they do. Well, when they come to the festivals each year and they watch the tragedies, after seeing that heroes and gods, people of noble birth, suffer far more than they do, then their life as a peasant isn't too bad. That is the purpose of tragedy. If we can watch all this suffering, in the end, we are purged of the feelings of fear and pity. And we feel better for our lives. You see, in all the tragedies, like Oedipus the King, the protagonist Oedipus accepts their fate. In the end, they accept their fate and they go on with their lives. 
they never try to, what the lawyers say, cop a plea. No. They admit that they are wrong. They admit that even though they had nothing to do with it, they accept their fate because they are noble. They are a great and good person. And they realize they have this flaw. And they face it like a hero. Now, when we see that, again, it will purge us of fear and pity. And therefore, we live better lives. No, sir, I, I have more people waiting in line. I need to sign their scrolls. I thank you for your time. I would tell you more, but, but I need to sell scrolls. So, um, if you want to know more, please read The Poetics, and it will go into great detail of what tragedy should be. So, I bid you adieu. Bye-bye <laughs> now. Next.